So there is a slide that I, I will I'll, I'll pull up, and it talks it's 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 kind of like a summary of just overall is the you know the housing crash coming or what's really the the uh, consensus of what's next. And I like how they broke down different variables that really play into at least what caused the last housing crash, which was I think like 2000, whatever, 2008, 2009, around that time, uh, versus the current housing cycle. So the, the NAR and the NBA and other authorities, they've kind of compiled that data. And the first variable that they looked at is the just the overall job cuts. Um, from the last housing cycle perspective, they were, you know, it says 8 million jobs were, were cut during that period of time. Obviously, they haven't taken into account the current um, job cuts, especially in the past few months that we've been hearing, like, you know, the all of the, the tech giants and all of that. But their comparison is that just overall job, jobs have been cut have been significantly, you know, higher in the last uh, housing cycle crash that that's you know that we've experienced. So there were so there were a lot more jobs cut ten years ago or t whatever t thirteen years ago than there were now. Mm -hmm. Seems that way, but it's also it's a little bit misleading because they're saying you know current housing cycle job cuts are you know relatively non-existent compared to the last cycle, which on the sh I don't know how how accurate that is because of you know everything we've. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lag in that data, right, mm -hmm. um, on on the unemployment and, and everything, but it's probably directionally correct would be my guess. And mm -hmm. yeah, that that provides stability, right? So then you don't have people defaulting on their mortgages because they don't have income anymore. And you have a much lower percentage that that's going to impact. So when you have stability, that's um, maybe less investment from people but a lot less, you know, fire sale, we got a default on our mortgage, foreclose, um, trying to quick sale, uh, you know, so you're gonna have that, that stability, I think is key, because we had a lot of instability back mm -hmm. in 07, 08, 09. Yeah, no doubt. So there's a lot of other variables that are, you know, all around just employment, unemployment, the types of jobs and all that, I'm not gonna get into those. What, what's interesting is on the, on the, on the financing side, they, there's a category of subprime loans. So the subprime loans, anything, you know, if, if folks that are not familiar with that is, is just, you know, I guess loans that have been extended to folks that, you know, don't necessarily qualify with right. lower higher, credit. Yeah, exactly. Low credit, higher interest, um, you know, very, you know, just interest only types of based loans. Yeah, they're higher risk loans. Extremely high risk. So the category of the last housing cycle that it has been actually prevalent category of financing of subprime loans, hence the reason for a lot of just that, that you know, the housing crash. Um, and then the current housing cycle, it's virtually none. Um, that these Did the banks don't... learn their lesson. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's the case. So it's that's that's promising. So I like that from a standpoint of that you know that's at least not going to impact from just a lot of defaults. And they dive a little bit further on a mortgage delinquency. So a lot of the subprime loans, obviously, they've been extended you know to folks that don't necessarily qualify, which led to a lot of delinquencies, foreclosures, short short sales, and all of that stuff. So mortgage delinquency was at 10.1% in the last housing cycle, 2008, 2009-ish. And the current housing cycle mortgage delinquency is at 3.6%. So a lot, a lot less than what has been historically, at least in the last housing crash, which is, which is you know, promising. So it sounds like we've learned our lessons from that standpoint. Now, there's always uh, things that happen that we don't foresee. What is that called? Black, uh, black swan. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You could, you could, we could have easily have a black swan event, no doubt about it, but we've, we've seen the previous black swan and we've sounds like done a lot of good things to, to curb a lot of the issues that happened in the past. <laughs> no doubt. And 
furthermore, we talk about homes in foreclosure. So last housing cycle, 2008 to 2009, homes in foreclosure were at 4.6%. Um, and the current, you know, current housing cycle, it's 0.6%. Mm. So that's, that's an interesting and very promising positive statistic. Yeah, Most a lot of stability. A lot of yeah. stability. That's good. Yeah. Although yeah, some like invest, some investors want in a lot of investors want instability. <laughs> True. Um, as bad as that is for the broader human beings, it is uh, for if you are just a ruthless investor, then you probably want a lot of instability because foreclosures mean deals and uh, it means that you can go further with your money. So um, I'm sure there's some people thinking that they want a little bit more instability.